Hello and welcome to my latest feature video which today is going to cover the updates of MIDI mixer and new rack. I also want to demonstrate the highly requested feature which is the ability to remote control uh, MIDI mixer from external hardware controllers and we're going to utilize uh, new rack and one of the new features I've added to new rack to help simplify that integration. So the first thing I want to cover is snapshots and the ability to capture more than eight snapshots. Now if you tap and hold the snapshot button it will now toggle to a second bank of eight snapshot buttons and uh, so we can capture now up to 16 snapshots. So with the aid of the fader lock here I'm going to capture uh, the settings of the mixer into S1 by pressing the camera button then the S1 button. Uh, I'm going to move these uh, faders to the top. I'm going to hit, hit uh, the camera button and S2. So I have two distinct snapshots. And if I press S1 and S2 you'll see it jumps between those two sets of settings. Now we can use this fader speed menu to control the speed at which we transition from one snapshot to another. And we can now have a half and quarter second transitions. So now I've set the transition time. If I snapshot back into S2, you'll notice that when I press S2, we are doing a quarter second transition now. So those uh, fraction of a second transitions are new. And if I quickly set S1 to be a one second transition, you'll see the difference in transition time between what we could previously do and what we can do now. Now you may have noticed in the fader speed menu there is a number of options now that allow us to fade over a set number of beats. Um, so we can transition over say four beats. So if I select a four beat transition and since we're currently set to 100 beats per minute uh, a four bar transition should be just under two seconds of time. You may find this uh, easier than setting a hardwired number of seconds. So now to another new feature which uh, was highly requested which was the ability to remote control MIDI mixer uh, from external hardware or from uh, external MIDI messages. And the one thing that was requested most was the ability to actually trigger the snapshots remotely. Now as you can see here from the AUM settings I have a Korg Nano Studio connected via Bluetooth. And what I'm going to try and do is trigger these snapshots uh, by pressing keys on the Nano Studio. Now the first thing you've got to do is to come into MIDI settings and turn on remote control otherwise nothing will happen. Now if we go back to uh, MIDI mixer and I press a few keys on my Nano Studio uh, you will see that it is actually triggering uh, S1 and S2, the snapshots we created earlier. And the secret to this is that these uh, note values 0 to 15 need to be sent on MIDI channel 16. Now if you have a remote hardware mixer you can also configure it so that the faders, pans, mute, solo and everything uh, can be mapped and can be triggered remotely. Now you need to make sure that MIDI channel data for channel 1 is coming in on MIDI channel 1 and channel 2 on MIDI channel 2 and so on. And if you look in the MIDI settings, you can see the CC and note values that need to be configured to do that. Now, it's important to note that those MIDI settings are used to uh, send MIDI data to AUM. So they're configured to work with AUM, possibly not configured to work with your uh, external controller. So you've either got to configure the controller or in this case, I'm going to use a new module that I've added to new rack to help us get around the mapping issues and we're using a module called MIDI remap. Now to aid in this setup process I'm going to also add a MIDI monitor to the end of the uh, effect chain so we can see exactly what's coming into and through the uh, MIDI remapper. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is make sure that our MIDI input from our nano controller is coming into new rack. Now as I move the fader on my nano control we can see that uh, CC20 has been sent through uh, the remapper 
and what we need to do is change that 20 into uh, CC7 which is the fader now if you look at the top of the remapper we've got these uh, options A to L and A is currently selected that allows us to have 12 different mappings within one remapper and you can actually remap a group of um, CC's or notes um, quite easily using this so I'm enabling uh, mapping A and I'm going to change the output CC to be 7 now as I adjust that fader on my external hardware we can see that it's now been changed from controller 20 to controller 7 I can even change the output MIDI channel to 3 say to force it onto channel 3 and as you can see when I uh, alter the fader we're getting uh, MIDI controller 7 on channel 3 but as you can notice here it's not yet plugged into my uh, mixer so if I redirect the output from uh, new rack into MIDI mixer so new racks actually the go-between now adjusting the fader on my nano keys we'll see the fader on channel 3 move let's just change that back to channel 1 for this uh, demo so let's attempt to now map the pan control on my nano studio to the pan on MIDI mixer now if I turn the pan control on my nano studio you'll see we're sending controller CC21 so the first thing we should do is switch to mapping B on that uh, multi selector and we need to enable that and this time we need to set uh, incoming uh, value to 21 and outgoing value to 10 and now you can see the pan is actually working as we expect now it's a little bit different when we come to mapping the mute and solo so let's check the mute if we change to uh, band C and enable that we need to also enable this little uh, icon note icon um, which means we're expecting MIDI note input and when I press the mute button on my nano keys we could see we are receiving MIDI note 43 now we need to remap that 43 to MIDI note 60 as we have in the settings here uh, so just make sure uh, mute is 60 solo is 62 so simply set the value out to be 60 for mute and if I then press the mute button you can see the mute is working within the mixer now to complete the mapping I'm just going to uh, flick over to uh, band mapping band D and do the same for the solo button so in this case I need to map incoming note value 48 to note value 62 as we saw in the MIDI settings and once that is set up we can uh, press the solo button and see it in action on the MIDI mixer so that's a quick walkthrough of uh, programming the um, MIDI remap module to control MIDI mixer now that might be handy if your controller is quite difficult to reconfigure ideally you just configure to the uh, MIDI mixer settings but if you don't this is an alternate way um, now of course that handles every channel because whatever channel those uh, MIDI CC values are coming in on they go out on the same channel so the final thing I want to cover today is the new uh, MIDI modulation module within new rack so I'm going to launch new rack and the new module could be found within the MIDI section and basically what this module does is wait for an incoming MIDI note on and then it triggers this envelope which sends CC da data CC uh, values to a chosen destination in this case we're going to use Sunriser synthesizer now to get this working I'm going to wire the uh, AUM keyboard up as the input to new rack and then take the new rack output and feed it into Sunriser so new rack is a go between for the MIDI information coming from the AUM keyboard now I temporarily disable this module so I can hear the sound of the currently selected patch as you'll agree a pretty boring sound so let's enable the effect 
So the controls are pretty simple on here. We have an effect depth and an ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release, which do what you would expect. Uh, we also have a delay. Now if I open the delay and try again. So as you can see, the delay is simply the uh, the time taken between pressing the note and the um, envelope being sent. Now the two controls on the right are simply um, the controller number and the channel number. So that's just about it. We've covered all the new uh, additions to New Rack and MIDI Mixer since Christmas. So uh, I hope you enjoy those new features. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumb up this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.